Hey everybody, welcome to the Alba Crazy Podcast, the very first episode. I'm one of the hosts, my name is Tito. I've been here uh, in Albuquerque for about, what, eight years. I moved here in the beginning of 2009, and I came from St. Petersburg, Florida, which is so wildly different from what Alba, <laughs> Alba Crazy Albuquerque is. Um, and the fact that there's water, for one, there's a lot of greenery for a second. Uh, there's no real nice chili there. That was a great discovery when I moved here. Is the weed better there or here? Uh, I couldn't tell you. I left before I started. Gotcha. <laughs> Thank you. That's, that's a voice that you'll find out the name of coming up in a little bit. Uh, however, the other host of the day? Uh, is me. Uh, my name is Angora. Uh, I am the second host of the Alba Crazy podcast. I am from Nashua, New Hampshire. I have lived here for about 10 years. I couldn't exactly tell you the year that I uh, moved here uh, due to exorbitant amounts of drinking. <laughs> um, but um, yes, it's uh, very, very different than New Hampshire. Uh, a lot less snow. A lot less white people, you know. Uh, it's it's uh, it's a lot more sun. It's uh, great in so many ways that I couldn't imagine, and it's become the place where I want to be forever. Is the cannabis better there or here? Oh, here for sure. Nice. <laughs> um, a little bit about this podcast, the Albuquerque Albuquerque podcast, is. Uh, about the unique people, the crazy culture, and the wild history of Albuquerque uh, from an outsider's perspective. Uh, Which is what we both are. Yeah, we're just a couple of, of interlopers. Now, I'm an extreme outsider because not only am I not born here in Albuquerque, Albuquerque I'm not even born in the U.S. I'm from Portugal. Uh, I left there when I was three, so I have no real, like, relevant culture to Portugal within me, uh, like a Florida boy, uh, and now here. So the sun is the same, the amount of sun, the same brutal amount of sun. And, uh, but uh, less of a chance to go out in, like, your Speedo and to... Uh... I still go out the same amount in my oh. Speedo. <laughs> okay. Which is every day I just wear clothes over it. Oh, well, that's a little bit depressing. <laughs> or maybe it's... <laughs> Or maybe it's not. I don't know. I haven't seen any. I, I don't know how, how pasty it gets down there. It doesn't get very pasty because I enjoy wearing shorts at all times. Even in the winter, I hate the feeling of pants because I feel like I've hindered my movement. Like if I want to climb a tree or something, I feel like I can't to the best of my ability with pants on. So I'm always wearing shorts, so i got pretty tan legs. You have a very weird idea of fitness. Uh, do you have any... <laughs> Hopes and dreams for this podcast. Uh. Hopes and dreams for this podcast. Yes, I do. I want it to become the number one most listened to podcast in Albuquerque. Highly doubtful. <laughs> highly doubtful. How about the s- number one most highly listened to podcast in this room? That's also a goal. That's also a goal but also highly doubtful. (laughs) Uh, How about you? Um, Hopes and dreams? Hopes hopes and dreams. Um, I I have very simple hopes and dreams for the podcast. I hope that this podcast uh, reanimates my mother back to life and has her come to my door to tell me that she loves me finally. Ooh, and gives me a hug. That first one was, I believe, that we, we can achieve that first one. Maybe not the second one. I wouldn't even be surprised. <laughs> not miracle workers here. No, 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 no. Well, joining us for our first podcast, our first wonderful guest is actually a podcaster of his own. Uh, and actually... Uh, He runs the number one podcast in Albuquerque, doesn't he? (laughs) Yes, he does. Well, thank you. This is the largest clip-on microphone I've ever seen. (laughs) 
Hi there, I'm John Cuellar. Thank you for having me, guys. You guys are really freaking awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I was trying this clip-on microphone bit, which clearly did not work. I was, this, did you see that? For, for the audio people, I was yeah, sliding the microphone up through my shirt, and I was like, hey, it's clip-on, but it's incredibly big. Yuck, yuck, yuck. We all laughed, right? I did. A good we, time. I, I actually thought that your, your dick was sliding up your did shirt, you? <laughs> and I said, wow, John has really been hiding big the one. biggest <laughs> secret that, uh, I mean, I was like, how has he been able to hide that thing for so many years? Would it, it would, well, it would be great to have a wiener that you could put in your own mouth without having to bend at the waist, <laughs> which essentially that, that's what that would have been. I mean, that, that's yeah. a struggle of any guy is like we can all bend at the waist enough yeah, to get in our get mouths, mm -hmm. but that's so much work. Yeah. I just want to like lie back on my bed. I want to recline <laughs> as I recline, stuff yeah. my mouth full of my own dick. <laughs> Do you ever think that that's why, like the those those beds were made? You know the ones. You know the yes. I mean, I have one of those beds, and I can't. You know, well, you don't suck my dick. own dick with it. <laughs> you know, but I can. Yeah. I can definitely. You know, get halfway there. You it's, can get close. I can get close. <laughs> I saw. Uh, um, was it uh, Atlanta Housewives? Uh, one time where they hired a stripper. And that was his specialty, is he could put himself in his own mouth without bending at the waist. <laughs> and, like, they hired it for a, I forget, was it, like, an anniversary party or something? Seems like a I correct know. way to throw an anniversary. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that was the big, uh, that was a big deal, apparently. So, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, that would be amazing uh, if you could. But, no, uh, I, I work in the medical field, in the day job, yeah, and I do comedy by night. And, uh, or, with I consider comedy, but uh, I do it, and uh, also I have a podcast. Uh, uh, Tito kind of jokingly mentioned about his hopes and aspirations, you know, becoming the most uh, listened to podcast out of Albuquerque. Um, I think recently uh, our our podcast, you know, we kind of hit that. Congratulations. Uh, we have uh, over 20,000 downloads, but somewhere like in the back of my mind, I'm sure – it's Jason Green just replaying episodes over and <laughs> over just to fuck with me or like downloading them to different accounts just so he can laugh the entire time. I'm like saying this is the most listened to podcast in Albuquerque, blah, blah, blah. And literally, like, it's like, there's somebody that's just like behind they're the scenes like, uh, just downloading all these and just like, yeah, no, you're not. They're it's gaslighting not. you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like an old Trumparoo, huh? Yeah, they're gaslighting you. <laughs> So I so yeah. How, how um, long have you been in Albuquerque? All, all my life. I know I've, su I've succeeded. You 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 succeeded. <laughs> you can read. I can read, <laughs> and that's why I succeed. Um, I yeah, all my life. You know, I moved to Boise for three weeks uh, with a girl, and that didn't work out. Yeah, <laughs> it was three weeks. That's the longest I have moved outside of Albuquerque. Was that the right use of the word crux? We'll find out in editing. Man, I guess, right? curtain. So, I, so, uh, so, so, what is it that you do here in Albuquerque? Oh, uh, well, um, uh, I do the comedy. Uh, that's the night job, really. If I, at this point, honestly, if we're going to be honest, I would say I'm probably more of a hobbyist. I don't have a decent clip. I don't really have a press kit, and I don't have a website. And to me, like as far as comedy goes, those are kind of the three crucial things. Now, I like, I really lo love doing comedy locally. We have a great comedy scene here, and one of the things that uh, my partner uh, and broadcast partner, <laughs> Alan, uh, that uh, that we wanted to do is let people know just how many funny people there are here in Albuquerque. So th that was th those were some of the reasons that I wanted to, to do a podcast in addition to comedy, you know. And I was fortunate enough to run into Alan, the par my partner, who knew, has all the technical know-how. And I know all these great people and comedians and local artists. And it kind of – there was a lot of just luck and chance that went into it. And I think that's why it's done so well. Uh, uh, as far as a day job goes, mm -hmm. though. A day what job, is it yes. That you do. I work as a medical receptionist, uh, which is a, uh, you know what? It's a great job, uh, at least for me. I, I I consider myself pretty damn good at it, but that's because I try really hard and I put a lot of effort forth. Um, it's interesting uh, the the way the comedy uh, 
interacting with an audience has directly translated to patient interaction. Hmm. Uh, so when I first started, I've been at this company for 15 years. Wow. And when I, ah, uh, 16 now. So when I first started, uh, I went in, applied. They called me back like a month later. I'd been out of a job for six months. It was like a really lean fucking time, like uh, 2001, 2002. So I finally got in with this company and I got in as a receptionist and uh, they were really impressed with my phone etiquette and just, you know, how driven I was. And uh, at that point I was in my early 20s. I wasn't the most driven person, but, you know, I liked having a job. I liked having money and I liked having people. Uh, uh, I guess I liked having a position where I could help people. Mm -hmm. But at that point I didn't even see it as helping them. I just kind of saw it as interacting with them and saying, hey, at that I'm point, good with that. At that point, did you see them as like people groveling to you for, no, just kidding. You know what, I, uh -huh. I honestly, they were just patients or customers. You know, there are some people that I'd go the extra mile for, but where I was then versus where I am today is just a world of difference in terms of attitude towards that job and just my outlook on what, on what I'm supposed to be doing in this world. So having this job, would you say that it, it expanded your level of empathy for people? I would say that's part of it. Um, a part of it is I think just getting older mm -hmm. and uh, being more empathetic and more sympathetic to the different things that happen to, to a person in life and the different life experiences that shape us. But not only that, just how fucking short our time is on this earth. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if you guys are hardcore uh, religious or have these strong beliefs in religion or what comes after. But if there's nothing else after this, if this is all we have and like all our consciousness is just, you know, in this this life form that we're at now and it goes away afterwards. Well, how much more important is it to make a difference while you have that consciousness, while we are able to interact with the people that we interact with, you know? Agreed. Uh, there have been times when, you know, we're at open source now, and there have been times where at the end of a gig, I've looked around and I've seen, you know, a large portion of the comedy community around, or I've seen just a large collection of people that are very important to me. And I look at it a little bit differently than just, you know, a room full of people or post comedy gig like these are these people are spiritual entities that you know that I've happened to come into contact with for this brief moment and it's great that we all share this kind of interaction so just with regards to more empathy towards patients I think it's just a progression of seeing you know how short our time is here and trying to value and and, and make an impact well well I can whether it be in comedy and just uh, giving someone parting advice or uh, checking in a patient. And uh, I was, so I was a receptionist with that company for uh, five, five years. And then I got promoted to x-ray tech. But I did get a little bit lazy and complacent. And there were times when I'd just sit in my x-ray room, my file room, and I'd just watch YouTube videos all day. <laughs> <laughs> so it was pretty chill for the most part. Oh, wow. Did you um, have any experiences either as a medical receptionist or as an x-ray tech that you were like, only in Albuquerque could this have happened? Okay, so there's this uh, gentleman, uh, and uh, I saw, uh, we saw him professionally, and uh, uh, this was a few years ago. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And so uh, <clears throat> what happened was this gentleman came in, and uh, he had a few visits, you know, Seemed like a pretty nice guy. But the first day I checked him in, he, uh, he advised me he had just got out of prison. He had been there for 15 years. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going to judge you. I'll just help you fill out your paperwork. I understand you feel uncomfortable because you're like fresh out of La Pinta, as my uncle would say. And you're like back on the streets. And so, dude, I don't want you to feel weird. I'll help you out. So I went the extra mile. I helped him out. You know, it was really uh, explanative when it came to the paperwork. It was really nice. Uh, my coworker brought her, her children in that day. And, uh, when they walked in, I could see him turn around and glance at him and then quickly turn away. And I was like, Whoa. that's kind of weird. So, um, I checked him out. He left, you know, whatever. A few months down the road, uh, one of our providers is like, Hey, so, um, uh, you know, that one patient. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And she was like, well, uh, you need to put a note in there about, you know, how we have to be careful, you know? 
not in his medical record, but in another area where, you know, it doesn't print out. It's more like just for us, for patient interaction. So we have notes on, on the patients. And, um, and uh, she said, uh, he, he came up to me the other day and he said, you know, during the exam, I was like, hey, do you have any health insurance? He's like, no, I can't keep a job. And she was like, well, why, why can't you keep a job? And he's like, well, whenever someone looks me up, they fire me. So if you had to think, what type of offense might someone have that would be an absolute pariah, you know? Mm-hmm. That Given had this... all the information you have laid out, I don't yeah. think it's hard to guess. So after I heard that, it was like, you ever see those movies where it's nonlinear and uh, you see something, but then it, it happens... Uh, that something happens later on in the movie mm-hmm. and it brings you back to that p- first part you saw. And like you're like, Pulp whoa, Fiction. I, yeah, I exactly. totally understand why That's this... exactly what it was. I was like, when I heard that, I was like, put, you know, I connected his reaction to her, to, to my coworkers, kids that walked in. And I was like, that's so fucking, oh, dude. I never treated him different. Never, you know, let on that, you know, I was completely disgusted by what he might've done or, you know, because it, he never brought it into the office. It was never an issue. Yeah. So for me professionally, I could compartmentalize and not treat him any different. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I'm always on my guard. If he were to come in and there were to be pediatric patients in there, I would do my fucking best to make sure that they stayed away from him. Well, yeah, yeah. and that's the point of having those no- notes in the files for you guys. A little bit, and that's another slippery slope is, like, what if someone's really crazy? But uh, you have a note in there. It's almost kind of like... You have a note in there, this patient's really difficult and awful, but at that point, it's something you should know, but at that point, it's almost like, well, what if they were just that way to that one person? Yeah, so now you're prejudging. So it's well, like I mean, really I, slippery. I, I, it, it becomes a slippery slope, and I know that because I've, I've had to read my medical records. And it's, yeah, exactly. Uh, and so, and also some, sometimes the things you say to people, uh, especially me, it's I'm different always, when I'm, it's I'm always t- joking. Typed. Yeah. And so some people have taken my jokes as hostility. Mm. And I'm like, wow, this is, that's so not how I meant that. Yeah. And, and I don't know if that's, you know, you you can't say how people are going to take things. So now I don't even, like, I keep you, everything like above board. extra careful, right? Yeah. Because they are, I like, they actually... You would think at the doctor's office they're not judging you for mm-hmm. your character, but it's only after they've known you for a while well, and, and, that they can truly not judge your character. Yeah, and and I noticed that the, the 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 level of decorum that you set is what your patients try to follow most of the time. So there was this one time this guy came in, and uh, he was like, yeah, I, w- I want to talk to my doctor. And I was like, sure, sir, that's, that's great. I can help you schedule an appointment. And he said, yeah, I got to talk to him about this shit I got. And I mean, the stuff. And I was like, oh, that's funny. He'll look at your shit. But like when I slipped up there, I was trying to be funny, but I fucked up because from that moment on, he thought it was cool to say shit. And like, I was was like, if if I had been more professional and held to a certain level of decorum and been like, sir, uh, we could definitely look at your gastrointestinal issues or your colon issues. That would definitely be that would have cued him to like what our level of interaction is. Mm. And sometimes people take those social cues and sometimes they don't. And sometimes, you know, you make a gaffe like I did that in in that instance. And afterwards I kind of had to bring him back up to that level of where we should be. And I was like, you know, it was more work for me because I had to be extra careful. Mm -hmm. So that, that was one instance where I, it's kind of like what you're saying. And, you know, it takes people a while to get comfortable with you. Right. And then even then you don't know if they're, just being comfortable or what to do. Or sometimes, you know, people make judgments on you and it's, and you never know what they're going to think, like whether they think you're aggressive or I had one person in my file once, right, that I looked uh, much older than my age. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, it, it, fucked me up really? for like I'm not kidding. How is that how is that medically relevant? Don't ask. I don't well, even know. Or somebody <laughs> once said that I looked sloppy. 
I've I've read uh, physician's notes where it's like patient is disheveled. Yes. Um, well, but then I've seen patients but, come in and I'm like, you're disheveled. But there's, <laughs> but there's a, a difference between disheveled and somebody with a chronic pain disorder that knows that she's going to be somewhere for eight hours so she wears pajama pants. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I got you. Uh, a- instead of being like, I'm I'm not disheveled. Yeah, and, and then And then separately, <laughs> you know, somebody was once like, uh, yeah, they're like, who looks much older? I'm like, thanks, <laughs> thanks. I'm I'm just gonna go to the Sephora and never leave <laughs> until I'm pretty again. I don't, I don't think. I mean, I think I look about my age. So I was like, I, I read a file once where the the physician kept mentioning how pendulous the woman's breasts were. What? Again, what? her breasts are extremely pendulous. pendulous. <laughs> I was like, that's fucking awesome. What a great use of that word. That is, that is ridiculous. Uh, uh, I think I think he was trying to make a note with regards to her body fat, but I don't oh, know. Who knows? but still, I mean, yeah. sometimes it's just you can just say large. Yeah, yeah. Swinging. I think I, I don't I don't know why swinging matters. Yeah, he did have something like in quotations that said socks and rocks. Um, or rocks and socks. I'm sorry. What? Rocks and socks. Wait. But that was well, usually, usually though, when they have it in quotations, the patient said it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's I, and I'm just gonna say that because from what I've read, well, the, the sentence the said the sentence said uh, this patient's breasts are quite pendulous, i.e., quote unquote, uh, looks like uh, rocks and socks. This is the best of all possible worlds," said. Some old French philosopher. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the attitude. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's it's the best that it is. I'm gonna enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Um, something that I would like to hear because uh, Albuquerque is still somewhat of a foreign place to me because mm-hmm. I didn't grow up here. I'd like to hear uh, something from you about Albuquerque. Like, what does Albuquerque mean to you? Sure. Um, let's see here. Albuquerque to me means I don't know. It's a beautiful place. Uh, it's got a beautiful sunrise, beautiful sunset. Uh, there are good people. There are extremely horrible people. For the most part, <laughs> everybody's really good. That's why when you hear some horrible shit, it's so horrible. Is because, you know, it makes you realize that that's not the standard. That's the anomaly. Mm-hmm. Uh, but overall, it's it's my home. Like, Albuquerque is my home. When people dog it or they, they talk shit about Albuquerque, I understand. You know, I understand why people hate Albuquerque that, or why someone might. To me, I don't feel that way, but I, I, I can definitely see why people would feel that way if they've had negative experiences. But I almost, living in Albuquerque almost becomes a point of pride to me because it, is, it can be a tough fucking city. I feel safe, any, I feel safe anywhere in Albuquerque. I'm never afraid of any place. If I'm walking in the war zone, whatever it is, I'm always confident of being safe. But there are places where once my kiddo starts going by herself, I'm be like, don't go that area. Mm. Don't drive through there. Be careful. Avoid these places. So, you know, I'll be the first to admit that there is, you know, there's the there's some crime here that kind of concerns me. But overall, there are good people. There's great culture. To me, it'll always be home. Uh, no matter, even if I go off and do something, I'd always want to come back here, you know? Yeah, I like that. For you, it means home. Yeah, pretty much, you know? Um, we uh, are getting to do a segment where we... Uh, segment, 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 segment. The insects a, love a, this part. A segment <laughs> where we check out the top story in Albuquerque. Cool. Right now. On mm-hmm. Google. On Google. Cool. Not being. Not being. Not ask Jeeves. No, screw Jeeves. Not screw Jeeves either. Oh. Mm. Can, I, can I guess like, what the number one story is? You, you, oh, oh, we're going <laughs> to. Are we going to take that? Go ahead was, and if guess it, it. If it was a, uh, I was going to say, if you guess what we were guessing, then it's awful. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. I'm not okay. even going to bring what, that up. What, what were you okay. going to guess? Uh, well, let's see here. I was going to guess whatever was on the front web page of KOB TV 4. Oh, okay. 
So you were you were getting wait, wait, wait. very logistical. Okay, hold on a second. No, you're getting like very like I'm going to give you everything but an actual direct answer. No, what no, is no. this? I, I no, could what? tell you, but I don't want to bring the show down. But I was I was guessing it was about uh, a missing persons case. Yes, that has that's recently that's been resolved. Thought. But we we yeah. just missed that by a little bit. A new story came up the pike. Okay. Uh, so the number one story for Albuquerque, Google is. Albuquerque homeowner frustrated after multiple crashes into property. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Where does he live? He lives in, uh, he lives in northeast, northwest. A northwest Albuquerque homeowner says speeding drivers keep crashing into his property wall and that multiple complaints to the city about the problem have been ignored. <laughs> Since 2014, three people have crashed into Eric Mendoza's property wall. Uh, the most recent was Sunday. Yep. Does it? Sounds. That was pretty great. The sound of driving, the sound of drivers crashing outside his front door has become all too familiar, but no less scary each time. Well, maybe they were drunk. They had a good excuse. Well, apparently it's about <laughs> speeding because it's like around a loop where you're supposed to be 25 miles an hour. Uh, people people going like 40, 50. It, yeah. The entire house shook violently, he said about the first crash. Like this is like <laughs> Goldilocks. <laughs> you know? He needs to. He needs to just like, uh, like Trump. He needs to build a wall. Yeah, yeah, a wall or around a, stro- his house. A, a stronger wall. Reinforce that wall. Oh, uh, he should know what he should do. House on stilts. Ooh, uh, that way the cars drive under. Uh, uh, he should get, uh, you know, something to take the air out of the tires. Ooh, like you a know, little guard thing. But well, what if they blow that? They the blow strip? a tire and then they f- like flip into his house. Though that would oh, that, that would, would be concerning. Would be Maybe you should put a nice car wash there. That way they could get a, he could just take the other side and be like, hey, I'll wash your car since you crashed into my wall. You know, wash that dust off. Think yeah. that would be too nice? Too turning the other cheek? I think it would be too polite. <laughs> yeah, probably not. You should probably, like, if he put up, like, some sort of image on the wall for people to avoid. Like the Virgin Mary essay. Yeah, yeah there we go. <laughs> or, like a pe- or just, like, a picture of a giant piece of toast with a picture <laughs> of the Virgin Mary essay. <laughs> That oh, way, people that would, would be more be... respectful. <laughs> people would be like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, but I'm hungry. <laughs> Crash. Uh, yeah, so that's the top story of Albuquerque. Well, thank God it was that and not uh, the some other kid. thing. Jeez. <laughs> oh. yeah. Uh, yeah, Albuquerque. Like I said, uh, Albuquerque has some horrible stories every once in a while, which is a bummer. Yeah. Well, Anne, what did we learn today? Uh, we learned that uh, doctors are very uh, disgusting note takers. They're people, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that this is the best of all possible worlds, even though you might not think it, depending on how last year went. You need to make it that way, right? I guess. Yeah. I guess. Thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, thank, thank you so much for coming, oh, John. Oh, thanks for waiting yes, around. I'm you, sorry. John. You guys are great. And uh, we'll see you around, Albuquerqueans. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to the Alba Crazy Podcast, the very first episode. I'm one of the hosts, my name is Tito. I've been here uh, in Albuquerque for about, what, eight years. I moved here in the beginning of 2009, and I came from St. Petersburg, Florida, which is so wildly different from what Albu- 